so i think this is the history you know that lot of pandemics has happened and they will happen see just like we as a species are living on this earth these viruses is also as a species they want to live okay now if we have weakened our biologies have become weakened this is why they can become more stronger for us so we need to ensure that our biology is healthy and for us to be having a healthy biology we have to be in sync with the nature hi everyone as many of you uh, would be aware or possibly even contracted the new influenza virus doing the rounds across the country we just wanted to share a few thoughts a few insights and more importantly some tips on the same on how you can keep yourself and your own family protected from this virus in in case you've not contracted it and uh, what remedies can be uh, taken in case you have contracted for a faster recovery now uh, many of us are getting to hear that this is a new kind of uh, you know a influenza virus which is slightly more potent uh, which is slightly more longer haul than the usual viruses well it does come quickly and sometimes it comes all of a sudden uh, and yes it does take longer usually you know it it would have taken 4 to 5 days for a normal virus to last but now it's looking to be uh, in the range of 7 to 10 to 12 days also if not you know uh, done well um so now what can we do uh, should we rely on external support should we rely on our own body uh, how can we cope better not only in the short term but also for a longer period of time because these viruses keep coming and going as the season changes um to talk more about that i have uh, dr ashwini dr ashwini is the co-founder and clinical head of wellfinity and a functional medicine practitioner So uh good evening Dr Ashwini Good evening Anurag thank you so much Right so if you could just give a broad overview of this influenza virus um how is it different from the previous versions because of you know the the longer time it is taking for patients or, and people to get better and also post recovery they are complaining of the similar issues of brain fog lethargy etc so one is how if you can explain what is the difference between this virus and the other virus but more importantly how do we protect ourselves immediately from this virus and also from other viruses that will keep coming uh, every year every season right so i think you have set the right context you know these things will keep and keep coming and keep going what is the best that we can do to protect ourselves is to shield our immune system or uh, make our immune system so ro- robust that we are even if it comes to us we are able to fight it and recover quickly now a lot of time these viruses will leave lot of uh, toxic waste in the body as a consequence people will even just like happening in the uh, uh, covid overall long overall uh, uh, whole symptoms were there so basically toxins remain in the system body is not able to clean them clear them as a consequence somebody suffers a little longer so at the end of the day if we make our bodies more healthy uh, more robust our immune system is we might not even get infected if we can get infected we might recover much faster or longer sequel of this uh, problem will be much much less if you could just touch upon an aspect and specifically with respect to the current you know infection on say the diet that should happen when you are when you are infected already right number 2 uh, because a lot of people say diet should be this diet should be that what kind of diet if you could give a broad recommendation on that number 2 i think all of us believe that rest is super critical because fever is telling us like fever is telling us the body needs rest i mean the re- rising of the temperature is a natural phenomenon in the body to get rid of the infections now when you are doing that if you are active in our daily lifestyle it becomes more difficult for the body to do the you know cleansing etc so how much of sleep is required how much of rest is required so one is the food one is the sleep and rest two is you know for example um, you know how much sunlight is required you did mention about vitamin d and the dosage which is being high so how much vitamin how much sunlight is required during this period and if there's anything else that can be done whether in the form of you know in steam inhalers or vaporizers etc for right. so the recovery during this period so i think the first thing is you know when somebody has a active infect viral infection the best 
as per Ayur Ayurvedic practices also is very, very standard rule that you don't eat too much. Or if you can go on a liquid and a juice diet, you, you have to give rest to your stomach. Because when you're digesting, a lot of energy consumption happens in the digestion itself. Now, when you are in active infection, plus you eat of bigger meals, that you divert your energy to your right. digestion and your ability to fight infection becomes or energy to fight infection becomes less. Okay, because you're already under attack. So I would suggest that you go on a juice diet or minimal diet. Okay. Make sure you don't take heavy meals. Make sure that you don't eat uh, uh, very late in the evenings after sunset. You shouldn't, you shouldn't eat much. Okay. Largely staying on a liquid diet during the period of this thing will have a fast, much, much faster recovery for you. Now, sunlight is very, very critical. Maintaining a circadian biology that in, when sun comes, comes up, you go on the sun, spend some time, 45 minutes to one hour. And as it becomes evening, you want to stay in the dark. Okay, no tube lights, no LED lights, and that itself helps you sleep better. You know, when you sleep better, you recover faster. Okay, because daytime is a metabolic time, body consumes a lot of energy, do a lot of metabolism. But then at it is, it's after sunset, there's no light falling onto us and no, no light falling onto our eyes. Body gets a signal that it is a time to repair, time to rest. And if we give yourself enough rest, then recovery will be much faster. And during this period, do you advise working on the laptop, mobile phones, or should we just rest for two or three days? Complete I think, yes, yes, I think you are absolutely right. It, you know, if we want to recover faster, we have to allow our bodies to be in the sync with the nature. When more interventions you do with the technologies and all that, you sort of disrupting the biology. This this technology is anyways disrupting the biology, but during the recovery period or during the acute infection, you want to be protected at least. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, well, hydration is very, very important. You make sure that you drink enough water so that you can cleanse out the toxins much faster. So they're not affecting you in a bad way. And, and one more thing is uh, how to help the respiratory system through whether steam inhalation, or vaporization does that help Certainly, if, if, if that is that is some somebody is finding difficult in their uh, you know uh, uh, breathing difficulty and all that you can certainly do one simple practice that i generally recommend which is fairly working is h2o2 nebulization where you take a, a, a one ml of uh, hydrogen peroxide three percent and then add four ml of normal saline and then nebulize. They really open up your lungs. But then another which you touched upon is very, very important. Is don't take too much of the paracetamol. Okay. We should allow our body to fight for ourselves. Not that, you know, when fever comes up and we intervene with the drug. So, so the interesting question we all get asked is, what is that level till where you don't take or you allow the body to support itself? I think if we say 102 is a very safe. Anything going beyond 102, probably you want to intervene with the paracetamol. But allowing the temperature not even to come. Let's say you have you have a fever and every three, six hours you're taking a, a, a paracetamol or any dolos and all that. That, that means you don't, don't even allow your body's immune system to get activated. Now, when your fever don't you don't rise your temperature, then it's a free run for the uh, microbes to grow. Now, when your temperature is high, it's easy for the body to fight. So that is a non-conducive environment for the virus. What is a supplement plan if somebody has to do for themselves? You know, if somebody wants to do a prevention of infection, you can do vitamin D, these are therapeutic doses. Generally, when we do a uh, uh, recommend supplement, most of the time it's a daily recommended do daily doses, which is very, very mild. But when we go into therapeutic purpose, we want to do a little higher dose so that protection is higher. So vitamin D, 5,000 IU per day. Vitamin C, we can start with five, half a gram to go to up to, you know, two grams, three grams. N-acetylcysteine, which very, very potent uh, uh, supplement, which is we can do six 600 mg twice daily, omega-3, 
1200 mg to 1600 mg uh, once a day and then of course a green tea then of course probiotics and pre- prebiotics this is if somebody wanted to protect themselves along with eating healthy getting more sunlight you can supplement these things to ensure that your immune system is fed with the basic raw materials so that you can easily fight if the infection comes to you now if somebody having an active infection or you got infection you have a fever what extra you can do to recover from yourself from the problem then you go, then go little higher vitamin c up to 3 gram 4 gram 5 grams per day in divided doses magnesium 400 mg per, uh, per day vitamin d you can go up to uh, uh, 20000 uh, uh, international units per day or little more than that also little hammering ha- call it a hammer dose probably 60000 for 7 days in the period of the infection just you know of course you can consult your doctor so that you take their recommendations uh, during this period zinc 20 to 40 mg straight away selenium and zinc are two antiviral nutrients in the in, that we can feed ourselves for for having a faster recovery lipoic acid improves our detoxification improves our mitochondria thereby improves our immune system thereby you know we can supplement that also 1200 to 1800 mg per day alongside very basic that that i mentioned in the beginning b complex and a vitamin a vitamin a is also have a very high potent role in improving the immune system and these some of the things that you can take under guidance of your doctor to improve or to fight the active infection so i think anurag if this much we do we fairly you know on a right way to protect ourselves great so this uh, this what you've shared right now right the the protocol infection for live i mean active infection how long should one you know when should one continue how long should we continue if you could just give some guidelines right so generally these infections we can say 7 to 10 days or 12 days so during this period we can say if you do it I mean, this is a very very safe kind of uh, uh, treatment but of course you can take uh, guidance from under uh, you know uh, valid doctor sure and 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 in the previous slide you mentioned for avoidance uh, what the protocol is for avoidance uh this what should be the duration when should the duration be so ideally if somebody comes to us we we do a beforehand we test the person and see what what the levels and accordingly move ahead but then if somebody just as safer you know without uh, any problem they can one month to one and a half month they can do it and fairly and then see these are nutrients always required in the body so you can do a pulsing system you do it for one month one and a half month take a break for another one then they will reintroduce for some period of time then again take a break like that you can keep doing so that you are protected for a longer run so is it fair to say that you know you do it for one month give a break and then do it for one month so basically you are doing alternate months you can safely do that without any problem if you don't want to get into testing and all that Please just uh, take the audience through a small PPT for their vis- visualization, so that they can understand a little better. So at the end of the day, what is important is we have to understand. It doesn't matter what comes to affect us. What is protecting us is our immune system. Okay, right. what is protecting is our immune system, and our focus rather than you know somehow to conclude fighting the virus, that that we focus on protecting our own self. making our own self more robust has a consequence doesn't matter what is the severity and what is the power of that virus we still be able to tackle because humans are very smart organ organisms we're not so you know we can succumb just to a infection as long as we are healthy so this is one thing and there are various kind of different levels of immune system innate immune system adaptive uh, immune system then uh, humoral immune system where antibodies play a role now lot of time the focus is only on the antibody based immune system but if you look at innate and adaptive are very very powerful okay and antibodies are just a short term game when we get infected or when we get take a vaccine they come in for let's say 6 8 months and they go off but a overall longer protection is given by the innate and adaptive uh, cellular response so it is important that we do the right measures to improve these different forms of the immune system not only focusing on the antibody uh, immune system so that's a very very important uh, uh, learning we should all have 
Now, it's also important that we need to understand what makes our immune system or what trains our immune system. Now, this immune cells which are produced from the bone marrow, they are naive cells. They need to be trained to fight for, uh, for us, not fight against us or against what species they should be fighting. Okay, so the microbiome, the microbiota in the gut, the, the, the colonies of the microorganism in the intestines or in, on the body largely trains these immune cells. Okay, now if we have these microbiota in the intestines in a healthy way, then immune system will be trained in a healthy way. It should be able to protect us. So if we have to, the first major uh, uh, understanding that we have to build is we have to build a healthy immune system, a, a robust immune, immune system. We have to ensure that our microbiota in the intestine is also healthy. Okay. Now, what can damage the quality and the quantity and the diversity of this microbiota is kind of things that we are doing to ourselves. For example, if we take a one round of antibiotics, we delete the diversity of these uh, healthy microbes. Now, as healthy microbes will come down, more pathogenic microbes will go, that will down-regulate the immune system. Then that increases our susceptibility to get infection or severe infection or difficulty for us to recover or it might take a longer period of recovery. Now, if our food is very, very bad, which is more refined carbs, and uh, 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 refined sugars. That means we're feeding the bad microorganisms. That also causes the imbalance in the microbiota. Thereby, the immune system can become uh, much more poor. If somebody is stressed out all the time, then also we grow more infections in the intestine. Thereby, our immune system can get weakened. If we take pesticides into food, hybrid food, packaged food. So we need to stop the damage we are doing to our microbiota. Thereby, we can stop the damage done to the immune system, thereby we start protecting the immune system. Okay. Now, when you st stop the damage, then comes uh, how do we grow this microbiota in diversity and in the quantity, thereby we grow a healthy immune system, a robust immune system. So one should be eating a, a healthy rainbow diet, okay, with a lot of greens, a lot of different colored vegetables and fruits. Then to grow healthy microbiota, we need to take a lot of prebiotic foods. Prebiotics are the fibers in the food. Now, fibers can come from shankhalu, sweet potato, suran, cabbage, dandelion, garlic, spring onions, beetroot. So, a lot of uh, uh, raw bananas, uh, green apples. So, a lot of nature has given abundance of the foods which has a lot of prebiotics. Now, what kind of prebiotic food we eat, kind of microbiome we grow kind of immune system we can build for ourselves. Now, if we don't eat enough fibers, we don't increase the diversity, thereby we get a weakened immune system. Now, alongside the fibers, we also can take certain probiotic foods like pickles, fermented vegetables, salt pot, kimchi, lassi, buttermilk. These are the live strains of the microbes after fermentation, which also add diversity and quality to the microbiota, thereby the immune system can get better. You see, this is a very, very important concept, generally missed out from the regular uh, uh, conversations. Now, if we don't even know what is required to make this immune system better, how do we even work towards shielding ourselves? So this is very, very important for us to understand. Now, it's also important for un understand what are the raw materials that are required, nutritional raw materials that are required for us to build a healthy immune system. For example, vitamin A is required for, you know, uh, phagocytes that are, you know, macrophages and all that, they're required uh, uh, for immune system fight these infections. Now, if we have low vitamin A, then our phagocytes activity will be lowered down. Then our susceptibility to get a severe form of the infection or recovery can get delayed. So if, if somebody has a viral infection, vitamin A can play a major important role in fast recovery or protecting the infection in a, at an early stage. Vitamin D, E similarly is very, very important. It can improve the oxidative uh, uh, stress damage. Uh, thereby, recovery can become much, much, much faster. Vitamin C, very, very important. It's immune boosting. It also improves the recycling of the toxic waste. Like you mentioned about uh, somebody having a a prolonged infection and even after the infection somebody is feeling weak and uh, lethargy and fatigue so vitamin d c can really help with that similarly b6 b9 uh, b12 can help with w which uh, wbc maturation growth 
and also antibody production uh, production now if we we get infected our body has to make those uh, 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 different forms of the immune cells they need these kind of raw materials for us to fight now when we don't have enough raw materials how how would our body develop those uh, weapons for ourselves and to fight against that so again along with developing the right microbiota we need to feed ourselves with the right kind of nutrients okay very very simple but then we overlook all these things and we largely focus on the chemical based kind of you know the system then vitamin d is very very important now if we don't get enough sunlight our vitamin d is low that also lowers down our capabilities to fight infections as a consequence these infections can you know affect us for a longer period of time similarly zinc is very important and zinc and selenium are directly antiviral okay now if somebody is is low on zinc and selenium their ability to fight infection will come down and of course the immune the immune system immune cells would need enough proteins and fats now you see these are the some of the raw material and basics that to be done for a healthy uh, immune system ensuring that your body has enough uh, uh, nutrients plus your microbiome with your digestive health is good so that your immune system is robust so that you can fight if you you have the robust immune system you might not you know even feel that you had an infection or if you get infection you might recover very very fast and sequelae of the infection will be much much less now any last tips i know you've given a lot for all of us to implement and live with probably going down the road now uh, any last few tips and suggestions for this virus or for the new viruses and you know what i think the most important if you can give a you know a, probably a, an advice saying that you know what this is probably the norm that you know viruses will keep coming and going so i think this is the history you know a lot of pandemics has happened and they will happen See, just like we as a species are living on this earth, these viruses is also as a species they want to live. Okay, now if we have weakened our biologies have become weakened, this is where they can become more stronger for us. So we need to ensure that our biology is healthy, and for us to be having a healthy biology, we have to be in sync with the nature. The more you go against nature or away from the nature, this is where you put yourself at risk. We still, as a science, don't know much about human body. okay we might have anatomically dissected ourselves and know that this is what this is what we have named it but really how it works where we come from where we go a lot of unknowns in the conventional medical system so at least if when we don't know we accept the nature we stay with the nature when you get up get enough sunlight okay eat natural food don't overeat get good rest and drink good quality water now human ph is 7.4 uh, 7.3 uh, 3.4 to 7.4 now the ro water that we drink which is that's around 7 or less than 7 which is acidic to the human body now when we drink a bad quality ro water it steals away your electrons it puts you at more risk so drinking a simple as called as sun charged water will improve your chances to uh, be healthy and fight the infection in better way great thank you thank you very much dr ashwini thank you so much anwar